OP here, with a story that my old mom shared with me just before Christmas dinner last night. She's a staunch Christian woman, and usually shies away from ghost stories and the paranormal. So, her story didn't have a whole lot of detail, but I think it's worth sharing. I'll give a little background first. Mom's neighbor is an ex-cop named Rick. He moved in when I was a kid, and I saw him frequently while growing up, usually working on his truck or mowing his lawn. His wife was a real character. Her name was Cheryl. Cheryl's parents were shit. They kicked Cheryl out of their house when she was just 13. Cheryl quickly ended up under the control of a pimp, got hooked on drugs, then managed to escape around age 15 and found a quote-unquote real job. Forgot what it was. Cheryl told me all of this herself, by the way. She never minced words and wasn't ashamed of her past, but she never liked cops. She'd been arrested a lot while she was being pimped out. The cops who arrested her always treated her like shit, grew to despise anyone in a uniform. So, it's funny that she ended up marrying Rick, a cop and a veteran of the Vietnam War. Cheryl also developed a close friendship with my mother. The two of them could not be any more different. Cheryl was mean and cursed like a sailor. My mom is a polite, quiet Christian woman. But my mom endured a rough upbringing herself, so I guess the two were bonded by their pasts. Anyway, when I was about 10, Cheryl got into a bad car wreck. She was put on painkillers, developed an addiction. Eventually, she passed away from an overdose. As for Rick, he's lived alone ever since. The best way to describe him is humble and unassuming. He's also a very down-to-earth. He's a Christian, but more inclined to spend his Sundays fishing than in church. My mom knew this, so she was surprised when Rick shared the following experience with her. After Cheryl died, Rick began to hear her voice in the house. Keep in mind, Rick's hearing is not great. He suffered pretty bad hearing loss after his time in Vietnam and eventually had to get a hearing aid. But one day, he had taken his hearing aid out for whatever reason. He was sitting at the kitchen counter drinking coffee when he heard Cheryl's voice. She called out his name and Rick turned around half expecting to see his wife standing behind him. Of course, the house was empty. But the strangest part was that Cheryl's voice was clear as day. He didn't hear it muffled or faint. Rick could tell it came from somewhere behind him, and he could hear it plainly, almost as though his hearing were totally normal. Over the years, Rick says he's heard Cheryl's voice at all hours of the day, in every room of the voice. Usually, she calls his name, but other times he hears her muttering to herself, letting loose a stream of epithets. And every time, the voice is always clear and audible. And that's pretty much it. Here's one. Be my dad. Chilling in his house on a hill in bumfuck nowhere out in the woods. Nice place. His six fucking cats are running around because dad is a softy despite being the kind of guy who chases spooky noises into the woods. And once, nearly ran down Bigfoot with his car while I was a passenger. Story I've told here before, but it's for another time. Pop's honed hunter's instinct catches movement out of the corner of his eye. A stuffed bear he has jammed into the corner is moving. Somehow, this scares the shit out of my dad, who I have seen brazenly wade towards a pond where a big something leaped into it, and who has led other hunters into bushes where an injured and pissed mountain lion was waiting to shred them. But this teddy bear moving puts the fear of God in him. Apparently because his first thought of one of my cats is under it is disproven by a quick head count of his furry horde, and the idea of it being a mouse was disproven by his six cats having killed everything that wasn't him or them in the house. So instead of investigating, he takes a video of it with his phone. A video that went from one sister of mine, the bitch, to another, the one I actually like. She shows it to me. There were two instances of movement in the like 30 second video. The first was a sudden jerking motion and the next was subdued but repetitive, like breathing. The whole video had an eerie vibe to it and I could see under where the bear was sitting. There wasn't anything there and it wasn't damaged for something to get inside of it either. 
I would post it, but I'm tech illiterate and don't know how to upload videos or turn them into GIFs and WebMs. Also, my sister forgot to send the video to my phone, despite saying she would. Still, I find it funny more than anything that the breathing teddy bear is what scares my dad when he didn't flinch when he's being charged by boars or nearly shot by inbred hicks who tried to poach his land. I'm bad at green text, but I'll give it a go. Pretty sure I've told this one once here before. Be me, 22. Grow up just over the state line from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. For the non-Americans, Gettysburg was the site of a three-day battle in 1863 and the turning point of the American Civil War. Some 50,000 men died there. One night, some friends and I decided to head out to Saks Bridge, an old covered bridge on the end of the battlefield. Supposed to be haunted, but pretty boring after a few visits. We decided to walk down the road to an old steel bridge, the John Eisenhower. Commence getting stoned out flack. Fuck around for a bit, then decide to walk back. Come out of the overgrown area back to the part of Waterworks Road that is open to cars. Just before the intersection with Roberta Way. Guys walking three abreast in front, other body and I in back. Night is totally silent, not even a breeze blowing. Suddenly, we are illuminated from above, as if by a spotlight. But this light, it's wrong. Not blindingly bright, but the color is washed out of everyone. Everything looks gray. The radius was just larger than our little group, no more than 10 feet. Look up at sky, single point of bright light, not quite directly above us. Look down at Buddy called Hob. His face, shirt, and hair are all gray. Look back up at light. Everyone starts sprinting at once. Sprint back to Saks Bridge. Practically dive into the car we came in. Driving home in silence. After ten or so minutes, ask if anyone wants to talk about what had just happened. Driver tells me to shut the fuck up. Get back to Buddy's house. Everyone goes home. I was terrified to be out after dark for weeks after this happened. Periodically brought it up in the following months and years to the people that were there. But nobody really wanted to talk about it. I'm getting so tired of these endings. <laughs> New Year's Eve, 2020. Hob and his brothers throw a party. Probably 20 people there, most of which haven't heard the story. Someone mentions it. One guy's wife starts begging us to tell the story. Rather than just one person tell it, we go around in a circle, each adding the next major detail. Turns out, we all remember the exact same details and sequence of events. Location on the road, gray appearance of everyone, eerie silence of the whole thing, all of it. Hob adds one more detail, one that he has never shared before. As we were running away, he looked back over his shoulder at the light. Illumination on the ground was gone, but the ball of light in the sky remained. He said it instantly shot out over the horizon and out of sight. No acceleration and still no sound, just instantly moving faster than any airplane. Sometimes I wish he had never told us that. I have not told this to many people IRL, just a few friends and co-workers over the years, people that I trusted not to think that I'm crazy. One guy who is a big paranormal believer asked if we lost time out there. The truth is, I don't know. Whatever happened, thinking about it still gets me on edge six years later. Oh, he's about to come. I included the locations so that if any of you care enough to see where this happened, you should be able to find the exact spot. Back in 2016, me and my friend wandered on the seashore around 1 to 2 a.m. in summer. A cloudless night, so the circumstances were good for watching the sky. We were just walking together because everyone else went home, and we liked the weather, so we stood because the area was very chill. Then, we saw a ball of light on the sky, far in the sky, of an orange color which was flying in a very weird way. Definitely not an airplane because it was doing ups and downs, and circles with very huge speed, unnatural. We were staring at it for four minutes, and it started getting bigger. Smaller, bigger, smaller. And when it was the biggest, I would say it was around 10% of a moon shield. Then, it started getting smaller and smaller very quick, and it disappeared. Still don't know what the fuck that was. 
returning after drinking most of all of Christmas Day away. In a previous thread, I told the story of when I got stalked at the same store. There was a bunch of other strange non-paranormal things too. Be me, 20, working at same shitty store. Got moved over to morning stocking crew. Show up Thursday and Friday mornings just before 4 a.m. At this point in time, I had started dating this chick who was also on the stocking crew. We're sitting out front of the store together. I brought her a coffee and I'm chugging on an energy drink and smoking a cigarette. Hear movement to our left. Look up and see very disheveled and obviously strung out guy. Probably about my age too. He wanders up to us, clutching his stomach. Hey, can, can you call the cops? I, I, I've been stabbed. The fuck you mean, that tiff? It's pretty dark, but the little bit of light coming through the store windows. Cannot see even the faintest bit of blood on the guy at all. Uh, you good? I ask him. He ends up sitting down in front of us. He says he's okay, but he needs the police. Think about the last time I denied a drugged out guy a request. Opt to call the police. Dial non-emergency since he doesn't seem to be at risk. Explain the circumstance best I can. Being careful to make sure the operator understands that this guy is not in his right mind without pissing him off. Operator requests to talk to the guy. What the fuck, why? mp 3 Hesitantly hand phone to the guy. He starts talking to the operator, rambling about how his roommate and him got into a fight, and that said roommate stabbed him with a glass knife that locked his soul or something. Manager pulls up to let us in. Notice the situation. Guy stays on phone with operator, continuing his drugged out schizoid ramblings. Hang by to make sure I get my phone back. Cops show up. Tell him they're going to take him to get help. They make sure he gives me my phone back. Continue shift as normal. Never see Guy again. I hope that guy got help. He was really polite. Be me. Primary school. Start dating girl named Susan. Always hang out with her and my friends. One of the friends is named Roberto. Roberto always liked to tease me and Susan. Normal playground insults that got so bad about dating Susan. It got to the point whenever I hold Susan's hand or hug her, Roberto is there with a dumbass remark and he ruins the moment. Eventually break up with her because of this. Hardly speak to her ever since and just hang out with my friends. Roberto moves to Texas and never see him again. High school graduation. Managed to talk to Susan. Ask her if she remembers Roberto. She doesn't and said I always acted weird whenever we were together, like someone was with us. Ask my other friends if they remember Roberto. They don't remember him, even though we always hanged out at the playground. My face when I was cock-blocked by my imaginary friend. So, this happened to me three decades ago. I've had a few minor supernatural experiences in my life, but nothing as terrifying as this. Work retail job while going to college many years ago. Short-handed that summer. Work open to close shifts many times. Lots of overtime. Live with folks out in the sticks on a few acres in a small community of about 50 homes. Neighbors are having a block party on a Saturday that I'm working all day. Tell my folks I'll stop by when I get off if I'm not too tired. Work a 14-hour day. Drive 45 minutes home. Too damn tired to stop at party. Get home to empty house. Parents and sister are at the party. Make myself something to eat. Turn all the lights out. Go to bed close to midnight. Realize parental units aren't used to coming home to dark house. Get out of bed to go turn the kitchen light on and flip on the outdoor garage light. House is pitch black. We live in the country. There are no outside lights anywhere. Walk through the den. Reach out to touch the edge of the pool table so I don't run into it. Come around the corner and freeze. I can't see the VCR clock. VCR clock is LCD, bright green. Should be easily seen from where I'm standing in the dark. Live in the house for 10 years at that point. There is no way I could be in the wrong spot. Suddenly, realize I'm not alone. A wave of dread and fear rolls over me like I have never felt in my life. Every hair on body stands on end. I become still as a statue. Stop breathing even. Some primal instinct tells me if this thing senses me, I'm dead. Sit there for five minutes, not daring to move, breathing through mouth as shallow as I can. Whatever it was, 
I could sense it was a few feet above me, and about 20 feet off to my left. Maybe in the attic? Hard to tell. Absolutely convinced I was in mortal peril. Finally, the sense of dread subsides. At the exact same time, I can suddenly see the VCR clock again. I wait a few moments, then move to the window near the clock. Throw all the outdoor lights on at once. Nothing's out there. Throw all the indoor lights on. Nothing. Grab my shotgun, load it, and walk through the whole house. Nothing. Turn the TV on, wait on folks to get home about an hour later. Never say a word about it. Tell them goodnight and go to bed. They never asked why every light in the house was on. No idea what happened to this day, but that presence was real. Whatever it was. Something triggered my lizard brain into fight or flight mode, which has never happened since. It was 30 years ago, and I can still remember how terrified I felt that night. Literally, how do you wake up from this? This is a long way down in the thread, but maybe someone will see it anyway. I live in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, too, and know exactly where the other Anon is talking about. Except, I'm a ghost tour guide in the town, and I spend a lot of time there. One day was not a typical happenings, though. I had made this friend of someone who worked at the shop with me, and we hit it off very well. We would hang out after work. Tours go from 6 to 12-ish almost every day that we worked together, sometimes until three or four in the morning. Behind our tour shop on Steinware Avenue, there's a hospital parking lot, and we would just sit on the curb behind the shop. There's small trees that line the area. Typical city sidewalk trees, maybe 15 feet high, absolute tops. At maybe 3.30ish in the morning, we were chatting. I see something in the sky, right above the trees. It was pretty big, like the size of a minivan, there was three concentric circles on it, though the line between them was blurred. A dark red inner core, a sort of dusty pink color, then lighter pink. I immediately asked my friend if she'd seen it, and she did. I wasn't afraid of it or anything. It was completely silent. I just looked up, and there it was. It was moving north quite slowly. No change in shape, and it just slowly went out of sight. It was like no ghost story, aliens, or anything I'd ever heard before. Still have no idea what it may have been. I need to get this off my chest. There's no one IRL that I can tell this to because they'll think I'm fucking crazy. You guys might appreciate it, so here goes. Typing it all up, then posting, and turning off my laptop. Because I'm through with this shit. I married young, and in retrospect before I was mature enough. Kind of a fuck. My wife was, and still is, completely devoted to me. Cannot express the depths of patience, kindness, and love this woman has shown me. Not proud of it, but I was an asshole to her sometimes. For shitty reasons, things I cringe about now. But if I had a bad day or something, it was just easy to take out on her. I know that sounds bad, but I never hit her or anything. I love her completely, she is my everything, I just had anger issues and was stuck in my own head a lot. Anyways, overall, happy marriage. So what's the next step after getting married? Getting a dog. She wanted a puppy, she would bring it up constantly, and her dad had a lab growing up so she wants a lab. Fuck labs. Stupid ass, dumb ass dogs. I wanted something badass like a German Shepherd. I was a military brat, grew up around Shepherd and police dogs, never had one. Always wanted a big, scary dog. So I put my foot down. We get a German Shepherd or no puppy. She does all the research and comes back and says, No, they're not beginner dogs. She doesn't have the time to train. Blah, 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 whatever. I tell her I'll do all the training and will be my dog as long as she doesn't fuck up my commands and ruin it. Accepts my terms and she's over the moon. We start looking at shelters and Craigslist and shit, but it's all ugly pit mixes. After months of looking, I find a listing for a beautiful black puppy, and I fell in love instantly. Talked with a seller. Neighbor's dog jumped the fence and knocked up his German Shepherd. Fortunately, the neighbor's dog was obviously some type of shepherd as well, so no weird babies. Puppy got dad's beautiful jet black fur. Fuck yeah, my dog's gonna be so badass. This is getting long, so small time skip here. Basically, 
I dropped the ball. I'm not proud of it, but getting a puppy was harder than I thought, and I had no idea what to do. My wife had some prior dog experience, so I kind of leaned on her to make all the decisions, and the idea was that I would follow her lead, but honestly, the dog was a huge pain in the ass, and I hated getting bit and cleaning up piss all the time. The last thing I wanted to do after getting up for work all week was get up at the same time to fuck with the dog on the weekend, so I admit I was a bit shitty to my wife whenever she brought up our original agreement. I would stop at my buddy's place after work for a beer and unwind, and be late to feed and let her out of the crate at the exact time my wife wanted, and we got into a lot of screaming matches over it. Again, I'm not trying to excuse it, I'm just saying what I did. Eventually, the dog kept getting more and more out of control and harder to handle. It was pretty much my wife's responsibility at that point. She dragged me to a trainer, and we found out that our beautiful little black dog was most likely a Malinois mix. Oops, that JPEG. Basically, the crackhead of the dog world. We had them on base growing up. They would run until their paws bleed, get thrown out of helos, love to fucking bite and attack people. Great. I offer to shoot it. Wife gets hysterical and refuses. I don't really get it since she complains about it all the time, but whatever. Seriously, she's in tears nearly daily over this thing, but I can't blame her. It's a destructive piece of shit, and I don't want to deal with it. Don't want to kill it or get rid of it. Fine, it's your dog now. To her credit, wife steps up. She buys books, takes classes. She really embraces the situation and teaches herself how to train a working dog. Honestly, I'm really proud of her. Through blood, sweat, and tears, she managed to turn this dog around. I actually enjoy being around the dog in evenings now. No more stopping for beers after work. Marriage improves. Life is good, mostly. Wife is resentful, but she mostly keeps it to herself. She had to quit her full-time job to make time for the dog's needs and doesn't really like her new gig. She feels like the dog is her only hobby now, and a bunch of her plants died, and her aquarium went to shit, which sucks. I apologized multiple times for everything once the dust settled, but since her new schedule is a lot more accommodating, I felt it made the most sense for us to keep things the way they were. Thanks to wife, dog turned out alright. No more biting or attacking. We can take her places. She's crazy fucking smart. Seriously, I've never met a dog that's intelligent. Standard stuff like opening cabinets, opening house doors and gates. Also, weird stuff, like climbing trees and ladders. Wife taught her hide and seek, which was cute. I came to really love this dog and appreciate it for what it was. Finally, I have my badass big black scary dog, and this was life for a while. Wife really got into training and seemed to finally enjoy it. Dog liked me, but loved my wife. Followed her around, listened to only her, never put on the leash, and would whine and howl incessantly if my wife was off doing something. Damn thing would never do that for me, but I guess I can't complain here. She would sit next to me on the sofa, curl up like a cat and let me pet her, but my wife was obviously the favorite. I'll be honest, it stung a bit. Uh, unfortunately, this story does not end here. Years pass dog, wife, and I are in the living room, chilling. I thought we were having a nice night, but wife, out of nowhere, asks me an asinine question for no reason other than to start a fight. I get irritated, and we start arguing. Things get heated. I'm not proud of this, and I regret it immensely, but I start yelling and throwing shit. It was dumb. It was not right of me to do, and I don't condone it. But in the moment, I was pissed off. Wife is screaming at me. I'm just getting more pissed off. Dog is sitting and watching. In a split second, everything happens. In the heat of the moment, I feel pure rage bubble up, and I slap the wife. My mind was blank. I couldn't control myself. I was shocked as soon as I did it. She recoils, and my chest feels tight. She's not bleeding or anything, but my head is reeling, and in that instant, the dog is on me. This thing that I raised from a baby, that I fed and housed and loved, is trying to fucking kill me. 70 pounds of pure muscle is on me, tearing into my body. I'm screaming. I'm beating the thing with my fists. I can't get it off. 
and I thought its puppy teeth hurt like a son of a bitch. I don't know what to do. I'm in survival mode. Drop to the floor, try to cover my neck and face. Wife is screaming, trying to drag it off by the collar. Dog is not listening to commands. Finally, drags it away. Probably a few seconds, but feels like an eternity. She's holding it and sobbing. We are all covered in my blood. I am writhing in pain, but my mind is clear. Get up, cross the room. I feel like a fucking Terminator. Wife is crying and begging me to stop. Ignore her. Wrench the dog away from her, and she sobs louder. Drag the dog outside and shoot it. Your lease has ended. The aftermath of that was pretty much what you would expect. I had a lot to make up for, and my wife hardly spoke to me or let me touch her for weeks. I cleaned the living room up and got myself taken care of. No lasting damage, thank fucking God. I had to essentially grovel and beg on my hands and knees for her not to leave me. I'm not trying to debate with anyone that I wasn't in the wrong here. Obviously, this whole situation was fucked, and I need to handle myself better, which I did. Seeing my wife so destroyed was my greatest punishment. I knew I had to do better. After a while, my wife came around back to her old self. She was, and is, overall a lot more relaxed now, because she's not having to be on top of the crazy-ass dog all the time. We miss her, sure, but now she has her hobbies again. She can sleep in. And she's not on my ass about the dog all the time, so it's a win-win. I'll be honest. I had been hoping the dog would die of natural causes for a while because it was just such a huge pain. It's sad I eventually had to put it down in such a traumatic way, but there was no chance in hell we were keeping it after that whole incident. Jesus, this is long. Here's the actual spooky part. Marriage is good again. Life is good again. Have a dream one night. Weird for me because I usually don't have dreams. I'm walking through a white empty space. No floor or discernible ceiling. Eventually, come across a faded white park bench. Like one you would see in an old-timey greenhouse or something. Sit down. I hear my wife's voice. Turn around. It's the fucking dog. Turn back. It's sitting in front of me now. Looks like an inky black void against a sheer white landscape. Talks to me in my wife's voice. Slow and deliberately. Staring me down. What dot X? Listen carefully. Confused. Don't respond. Dog continues. You have a large debt to pay. You have evil in your heart, and you are poisoning the earth below your feet with hate and malice. You have coasted through life by taking advantage of others, leaving destruction in your wake, and one day, it will be time to pay up. Do you understand? Say nothing. Hard to take seriously with my wife's voice, to be honest. Dog stares me down. The tone noticeably shifts. There's a disgusting ozone smell. I can taste blood in my mouth. In fact, it feels like my tongue is too big for my mouth, and like my skin is way too tight. Extremely uncomfortable, kind of freaking out. Dog's form is imperceptibly fuzzier and somehow bigger. Weird electric hum. All my hair stands up. Dog is getting huge. Still sitting, but now towering over me. I need to crane my neck to look up. The bench back is cold and digging into me, but there is nowhere to go. I feel trapped. I feel visible hands all over me, grabbing and pinching and holding me in place. Anxiety and panic is rising up in me, but I am somehow frozen. I am trying to talk, but I can't hear anything come out. White landscape turns gray. Dog is breathing loud and slow, staring a hole into my skull. I feel like at any second, I will literally burst apart. Dog pants, and it's like standing next to a furnace. Her breath is so foul, and I retch. Dog leans down until its huge head is a cunt's hair away from mine. Can't even see its eyes anymore. It's just a wall of fur, heat radiating off. Shit myself. Still my wife's voice. If you lay a hand on her, I will tear it off. If you bring her to ruin, I will rip you to shreds. If you break her heart, I will feast on yours. Do you understand? I scream and wake up. Wife is asleep. No giant devil dog. I am drenched in sweat and overcome with terror. What the fuck was that? Can't get back to sleep. Have to turn on the bathroom light because the pitch black room was freaking me out. Morning comes. I am edgy and a bit distant. 
I almost never dream, so the whole thing was just fucked up. Wife also seems a bit off. Don't ask. We sit on the porch and have coffee in silence. Eventually, she tells me about the dream that she had last night. It was so strange and odd. I was walking through a big white room. There were no shadows anywhere, so it just looked white and empty in every direction. The only thing I found was an old park bench, and I sat down. Then Bella came running up to me and jumped in my arms. I felt so happy. I was just overcome with such a peaceful and calm feeling, and I just played with her for a while. It was just like normal, like nothing had happened. Then she told me that everything was going to be okay and that she forgave me for all the mistakes that I made when training her, and that she loved me very much. Wife is getting misty-eyed and sentimental, and somehow is not noticing my extreme agitation. I ask her what the dog sounded like. Oh, she didn't really talk to me. I just sort of knew what she was saying. She sat with me on the bench and we just talked for a while. It was like meeting up with an old friend. Eventually, Bella said she had to go, but that she would always be watching over me and she would be right by my side, just like in life. And I don't know, it was just a really sweet dream. Oddly real, but I enjoyed it. I miss her. Somehow that opened the floodgates and got us to talking about all of this. I did not mention my dream, but for the first time in a long time, it was like I was really seeing my wife with open eyes. We talked and talked and I apologized so much for everything and anything I could think of. I started to genuinely feel remorse and sadness for how I had treated her over the years. She still forgave me and loved me anyway for all my faults and that broke my heart. I resolved to be a better man from that day on. Therapy is fucking stupid, so I started journaling and shit instead. Never raised my voice at her again. Made promises and stuck to them. We never brought up the incident again. Fast forward a few years. Marriage has never been better. I've grown up a lot, and I'm not a piece of shit when I'm mad anymore. We never got another dog. Kind of an unspoken thing. Life is great, except, I swear, every once in a while... I'll see the fucking dog in the corner of my vision. Turn my head, and nothing's there. I never feel truly alone, especially if it's just me and my wife. I'm on my best behavior at all times. A few times when visiting family, their toddler screams with excitement about the black doggy and rushes over to greet my wife. People shrug it off as stupid kid things, but it makes my blood run cold. Wife and I were walking around the neighborhood once, and some random ass kid pointed and shouted, Cool dog! Wife just smiles when this happens, but it freaks me the fuck out. It's all just little stuff piling up, but the worst of it was a few days ago. Friend of mine is more spiritual than I am. Hangs around with what I would call an esoteric crowd. Meet a lot of cool people at his parties. Wife and I were at a get-together a couple days ago. Laid back, bongs out, that sort of vibe get introduced to a friend of his who claims to be psychic. She's just telling everybody about their auras and dumb shit like that. Wife comes back from getting food. Psychic is immediately obsessed with her. Goes on and on about her green aura and how amazed she is to have met such a genuine person. Wife is flattered, but I can smell this lady's horse shit from a mile away. Until she asks if my wife had a black dog growing up. She says no, but a few years ago, Anon and I had a beautiful black Malinois, and she was a great dog. Lady grins and announces that the dog is patiently lying down at her feet, and describes a specific marking that the dog had. Everyone is wowed. Wife is touched. I'm creeped the fuck out. How does she know this? She had to have seen a picture, or my friend told her, or something. Irritated that she's using my dead dog for clout, and suddenly she turns to me and says... Anon, you know, it's the sweetest thing. She's following your wife around like a lamb, but she never takes her eyes off of you, no matter what. Lady goes on and on and on about how my wife had a stronger connection, but the dog must have loved me too, and wants to keep both of us safe. And she drones on and on while my vision goes dark. I feel like I'm choking and sweating for no reason. Stagger away and sit down, internally screaming. Wife follows me and asks if I'm okay. Her face is full of concern and love, 
And I see it. The fucking dog. It's right in front of me. It's staring straight into my fucking eyes. I'm fine, honey. I just need to sit down. Give her a big hug and tell her I love her. Don't break eye contact with the dog the whole time. She gives me a kiss and returns to the group. Dog is gone. So, that's it. I'm being haunted by some sort of fucking ghost dog. I don't know if it's my guilt eating away at me, or it's actually my dead dog that's pissed at me for shooting it or something. I feel like I'm stuck, but at the same time, I feel like things could be a whole lot worse, and maybe I should be grateful I'm getting off easy. I'm essentially being held hostage, but it's made me a better person and saved my marriage. So, maybe I really can't complain.